Hello, dear students. Let's return to the topic of array and pointers and learn few more things about this concept. Now I have kept myself ready with with a sample program over here, which will tell us how do you write for loops with the arrays and use the pointer convention to traverse the array. Now, just as you see here, I have declared one array A of five locations, but I have not initialized it. So, in the memory, we know that this array is continuously storing or continuously having five elements. Maybe the begin address of the array is 100, then we know that A itself is the address of the array and A points to the array. Also, remember, A is a constant pointer. So you cannot ask A to point somewhere else. It will now always point to the start address of the array. We have also declared one integer variable i so that we can start a for loop. Now our intention is we want to scan all the elements of the array starting from 0th element up to 4th element. So we will ask the operator to input a0, a1, a2 and so on. Now check this for loop. What the for is doing is it is starting the counter i from 0 and taking the counter i up to 4. So if you keep this i as 0 initially, check that if you keep i as 0 initially, then this scanf will run. And the scanf is scanning the value of a plus i. Just check this. But what is a plus i equivalent to? This a plus i written here is equivalent to and a i and ai that means we to the scanf to the scanf we are giving address of ai and you know currently i is 0 so we are giving address of a0 then whatever value user enters maybe 10 10 is entered 10 will go at which address it will go at address of ai that is address of a0 will store 10 obviously when the loop repeats i plus plus will make i as 1 so now we are ready to scan the first element. Just check this a plus i written in the scanf is equivalent to and ai, address of the ith element. So to the scanf, we are giving address of ith element. So whatever the user will enter, maybe 20 will go at the ith element. And this goes on till i becomes 4. You just tell me on any other day given. A problem to store the array okay that is scan the array on any other day you will always write this a plus i as and ai in your program at least i will write it like this but the point is that when you write and ai ultimately the compiler converts this to a plus i because this itself is the address of ai so what we did as a programmer instead of writing and ai we directly wrote a plus i which also works but in this entire story of the for loop one thing you have to understand is that we are not moving this pointer a at all we are just saying give me a plus i what is the value give me a plus i correct so a plus i first time will be a plus 0 a plus 0 is simply a that is 100 please try to understand next time a plus i will be a plus 1 a plus 1 will give us the address of next integer. Next time this a plus i will be a plus 2, it will give us the address of second integer stored from the base address and this goes on. So what we are learning is that once we have seen the concept of array and pointer, once we know array itself is the pointer to the array, array itself stores the base address of the array then number of conventions, number of notations are open to us. I mean, you may write and ai or you may write a plus i and then let i vary in the for loop from begin that is 0 up to 4 that is end. Now, how do you print all these values? Imagine these values are scanned. So, the for loop ends and you want to print all these values. So, check the next part of the program where we have displayed printf value stored in the array r. And then we are again starting a for loop. 
but note what we are printing. We are printing asterisk a plus i. But just remember, this asterisk a plus i is same as ai. It's not same as and ai. It is same as ai. Because a plus i written in the bracket will give you address of the ith element. And asterisk before that will give you the value. So the output due to this for loop will be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. But I'll tell you on any other day, you know, if I was asked to print all the values of the array, I will write a for loop, obviously. And I will write AI in the printf. Because this is more human. I mean, this is more easy for us to understand. But then instead, we have directly written what compiler does. We have written asterisk followed by bracket a plus i, which also will reach an element of the array and print each element of the array. So this way also you can scan and print without using any square bracket. Note, here we have not used square bracket anywhere. Actually, you know, when we use array, it's a usual practice that give the name of the array, then give the square bracket and inside the square bracket, give the location like 2, 3, 4, which location you want to jump to. But Although in this program we have traversed the entire array, never ever we have used square bracket. Anyway, what you like is your taste, I mean. I said my taste is I will always write A, then square bracket and the element number. Now let's go to this code. I have again kept myself ready with some code here. Now just check. What we are doing is we have declaring an array called A5. So I have shown this array having five locations. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's say begin address is 100. And you know that the name of the array A itself is the address of the array. So A points to the base address. Then as usual, I have declared one integer variable i for the for loop. And then I have declared a pointer. Please try to understand this p is int pointer p. So p can point to any integer. Although right now it is not pointing to any integer. Yes, but P can point to any integer. Now notice the next line P is equal to A. Simple. P is a pointer and you know A is also a pointer. Come on, A points to the begin address of the array. So we have a pointer P in the memory. Here I am drawing and P will literally become equal to A. What is A? A is address 100. So P will also point to the begin address. What I did is, I made a substitute pointer P. So A will stay at 100 and P is also at 100. P is pointing at 100. This way, I can ask any number of pointers to point to the base address just by making those pointers equal to A. Now have a look at the for loop. Here, I am starting I with 0 and going up to 4. Now consider I is 0 for some time. Then what will this line do? This says p should become p plus 0. Now, come on, p is equal to p plus 0 will make p as 100. It was 100, it will stay 100. And now the next line. Oh, look at that. There are so many ways open now for you to write scanf, printf with arrays. Tell me what are you scanning? You are scanning some integer. And whatever integer you input should go at which place of the memory? Of course, whatever you input will go in the memory. But where? Where in the memory? You have given the address. Tell me what is P. Look at the picture. P is 100. Look at this. That's address. So suppose you input 10. 10 will be stored at address 100. That means it will go in the array. Isn't it so? The another way of writing this scanf here would have been and ai. So first time i is 0, so we are scanning the value of a0. Another way of writing this would have been a plus i. That is a plus 0 if i is 0. Another way is make a pointer, ask that pointer to point to the begin location by making it equal to a and then simply say I want to scan p where you are giving the address so the value will get stored at that address. So this happens. Now let's see what happens when we repeat the for loop. What happens really when we repeat the loop second time? Just check. P is pointing at 100. Now 
So if you think of repeating this for loop, this for loop is repeated. Okay. Now I will become one. So this statement p equal to p plus one will be evaluated. P plus i means p plus one. So p is hundred and we are adding one to it, but it is an integer pointer. So it means that it will point to the next integer. Who will point to next integer? Yes, p will point to next integer. So what we now have is p doesn't point to hundred, but it points or it stores address of the next integer. I hope you know this. All these things. What happens when we increase an integer pointer by one? It will now point to the next integer possible, and next integer possible is at just after first integer. So now p might be storing address hundred and two. Who knows? If every integer takes two bytes, then p will get added by two. So p is now storing address of a one. Now just check what will this scanf mean? What will this scanf? I am just rewriting the scanf. Scanf percent d, comma p. Sorry for the shabby work, but just manage this. What will the same scanf mean? You are entering some value through keyboard, but where should that value get stored? It should get stored at address given by p. What is p? Come on, p is hundred and two. That's address of this location. So this location should store the value entered. Indeed, p over here is same as now. P is hundred and two, so it's same as address of a one, and it's same as a plus one. So number of possibilities open up due to this concept, and you may enter the array in this fashion, or you may enter the array by purely using an array name plus i, as shown in this code. Or you can write and AI. Number of conventions open up, isn't it? Let's see. Once you have stored the entire array, imagine that the for loop is over and you have stored the entire array. These are the values stored by the user. Now you want to print all these values back on the screen. So what's important is that while you are printing the values, you should make p equal to a again. So what really happens is p was moving in the array, isn't it? P can move. P is not a constant pointer. Please try to understand. P is an ordinary pointer, and it can point to any integer. But then, when we are ready to print the values of the array, that to using the pointer, then we will again say p. You better point to a again. See this line. P is equal to a. So p points to this location again, and we are now ready to tell p. That hello, you are pointing to zeroth location, so print it. Then move to first location, so p will move to first location, print it, and so on. Just check the for loop. Keep i as zero first time. So this line will be p is p plus zero, which means p remains unchanged. P remains hundred, and then we are printing integer. But what is the integer we are printing? Asterisk p. Asterisk p means value to which p points and value to which p points is ten. Note this is equivalent to writing ai, or this is equivalent to writing asterisk a plus i, or we can make a pointer, ask it to point to a zero, the begin address, and then simply say asterisk p. Asterisk p will give us the value. Now, if you think that this for loop is repeating, just try. I will become one. So, what will this mean? P should change. P is not a constant pointer. P can change. P is an ordinary pointer, so P becomes P plus one because I is one. If P becomes P plus one, then P is going to point to the next integer. So P might store address hundred and two now. If every integer consumes two bytes, then adding one to P, adding one to P will increase it by two bytes. And now think of this printf again, which is printing asterisk P. It means value to which p points and value to which p points this time is twenty, and this can go on in the for loop and it will print all the values. So you do it either this way, that way. All conventions are open. I hope you are a video after video understanding the facts about array and pointers. Important thing you know here. Is to understand the notations very well before we take any gate questions or some more examples where arrays and pointers conventions. These two conventions have been used in conjunction with each other.
Thank you very much.